The closed museum we will visit today is the Tate Modern Gallery in London, Britain's largest modern and contemporary art collection. The current Tate Modern is housed in a decommissioned power station on the south side of the Thames. Its most visible feature is its 324-foot chimney for the exhaust created as a result of the conversion of oil to electricity during its years of operation. The Millennium Bridge, right by the Tate, opened in 2000, the same year as the Tate's modern current facility. It crosses the river and heading north drops pedestrians off close to Christopher Wren's 1697 St. Paul's Cathedral. It is the world's most popular museum, named after an individual, and a rather obscure one at that. Henry Tate was a successful sugar manufacturer who in 1889 donated 65 paintings to the government for the creation of a gallery. It is the next most visited museum named after someone is the Victoria and Albert Museum, also in London, named after the more famous Queen Victoria and her husband. The Tate item we will focus on today is Metamorphosis of Narcissus, a 1937 work by the Spanish surrealist Salvador Dali. In the Greek myth, Narcissus, seen here, was a spectacularly good-looking man, so good-looking that he was put on a pedestal. You can see him here. This is a representative sample of those he spurned. And here is a close-up. It's women and men, although they don't seem particularly concerned in the way they're posing. One day, Narcissus saw his reflection in the water and fell in love with what he saw. Saddened by his inability to be with his own reflection, he pined away until he turned into a Narcissus plant. On the bottom right is a Narcissus plant, as you would see it in nature. With some occasional variation in language, a Narcissus plant is the same as a daffodil. Whether you see this or not, Dolly wrote, and I quote, if one looks for some time from a slight distance and with a certain distant fixedness at the hypnotically immobile figure of Narcissus, it gradually disappears until at last it is completely invisible. Surrealism was a phrase coined in France in 1917 to describe something not just realistic, but above, more than real, combining elements of the expected and the unexpected in a way that sought to find a larger truth. Here, by way of comparison, is a Caravaggio painting of the same theme. Dali was born in 1904 and joined the Surrealist movement in the late 1920s. Here he is sometimes, sometime in the 1930s with his wife, the same decade our painting was produced. Later, he would grow an eccentric mustache you see here that he became somewhat famous for. The artistic movement Surrealism was heavily influenced by the Austrian Sigmund Freud's focus on dreams the unconscious, and the relationship with sexuality. Dali called Freud's book, The Interpretation of Dreams, one of the capital discoveries of his life. This is Sigmund Freud on his way from Austria to London in 1938, along with his daughter, Anna. In March of 38, the Germans annexed Austria an act approved overwhelmingly by most Austrians. The annexation brought on a wave of oppression against Jews that Freud and his family were fortunate to escape. Salvador Dali visited the 81-year-old Freud 
at his London home, at Freud's London home, the same year, lugging with him our painting, The Metamorphosis of Narcissus. At 20 by 30 inches, here you can see it actually hung in the ga gallery, it is manageable to carry. At the meeting, the 34-year-old Dali was excited to tell Freud about his form of painting and how he purposely induced a paranoid state in order to break down his objects. To Dali, Freud seemed unimpressed, but the Austrian wrote the next day that he thought surrealists were, quote, 95% cranks, but the young Spaniard with his candid and fanatical eyes and an undeniable technical mastery has made me reconsider my opinion. Freud died the next year. Salvador Dali died in 1981. This concludes today's visit to the Tate Modern Gallery, another closed museum.